Um, thank you, Sam. I know you just left, but thank you, Vikram, for calling me here. Um, I realize that, uh, they, that like the customers who want a delivery in less than 30 minutes, they want me to talk, talk about a subject which I have no expertise on in less than the amount of time it takes to deliver food. They've given me 20 minutes to talk about a topic that I definitely have very little perspective on. But I do think that um, in a lot of our businesses actually do go through cyclical ups and downs. So I just share my perspective on how we look at a slowdown on our business. In fact, most people ask me, do we have a slowdown? And we said our slowdowns and our fastness is essentially entirely self-inflicted. People eat food, so any slowdown is happening because of things we do. But I do want to share a little bit about what I've learned in my previous experience as well um, in dealing with the slowdown. And I think a lot of what Sam said in his mantras of you know, managing the brand portfolio and playing the portfolio game, premiumizing, etc., are all good sage advice. So I would definitely, I was, a lot of that resonated with me uh, when it was being presented. Um, I do a couple of disclaimers. Uh, so we're talking about an economic slowdown. I have done uh, some level of graduation in economics, but I'm not an economist. I am not discussing um, startups which basically are not bound by the laws of gravity. They can, uh, I mean, I guess um, SoftBank has left the room, but we are not discussing anti-gravity, anti-extraterrestrial startups and their stories where there's a normal PLs don't apply. We're discussing startups which do have PL. But the last thing which I'm going to give, I do want to give a lot of credit, and not genuinely because there's a lot of advertisers in the room, because we are we genuinely believe that we are today where we are because of the work that we have done with our external partners. I was at lunch and meeting with a set of partners, which were our restaurant ecosystem. I was meeting with um, a bunch of uh, restaurant partners like Indigo Delhi and all at lunch today. So I do think that they are part of the ecosystem and definitely, uh, I know Virat is here somewhere. I don't know if, there you go. So thank you for being a partner uh, with us. But any credit given to them in this meeting is, is um, just coincidental. So I have some biases now that comes out of working in the companies that I have and perhaps where I've grown up and I just wanted to state those biases. It may be useful for you, but I do use this presentation even when I'm talking to a non-advertising audience. And on campuses, I'm saying the same thing, so I'm coherent. There's a, I did see there was a professor from, co-professor from SPGen, so I do say this. Um, I genuinely believe that if you think of, of advertising as a peacetime expenditure, then you've, in a sense, caused the slowdown that you're complaining about. Uh, so it can't be done away with during a downturn. And I think that ads are necessary until literally 100% of your target customers are using your product and they're using it 100% of the time. If the number is anything less than 100 on either of those two, then there's something wrong because either they don't know about your product or they don't know why they should use your product. So that's, that's a mindset that we've had. We've had plenty of conversations with investors who are saying, oh, we have a downturn. Should we cut our advertising budget? Uh, I've actually cut our discounting budget during this time, but not our advertising budget. And I, this is a fact of life. You'll still see Swiggy on TV, but you may see less discounts. So the background to the Swiggy story is that um, there's some numbers here. And, and so the 100 per month is relatively straightforward. It is the inherent consumer eating habit. There's roughly 100 meals eaten per month, uh, includes uh, tea time snacks and so on and so forth. So 100 per month is essentially the total, total market potential for us per customer. Um, the 17 to 8 is actually factually true data. In less than a decade, Bangalore's traffic speed has gone from 17 kmph to 8, which means it's officially faster to walk in Bangalore than it is to take any form of transportation. Now, what it means is that consumers absolutely hate to take that same traffic every time after they've come back from work, because the, because the, the commute back from work was perhaps unavoidable, but the commute to eat food out is definitely avoidable if that is the state of affairs. And a lot of our urban cities, I mean, the fact that census is decadal means that we really don't know how many people have been added. So if you look at census data, if you look at digital data and so on and so forth, many of our cities and zones have actually had a 3x increase in, pop in addressable population in just 10 years. Now that's stupendous when you took, think about all these urban um, constructions and so happening. There's not that much population increase when it's a sprawl, urban sprawl, but when it's these high rises coming up, it, it very easily adds up. So Bangalore, for example, is very clearly 30 to a, to a crore for our addressable population in less than 10 years, and that's just an example. But what I have kept a little distantly here is another interesting trend, and I know that this is a group that serves all of India, 
but I was in, in FMCG, of course, you, you, war stories are of going to all these random places and coming back and saying, I went to these places. This is an actual town that's outside Lucknow that I've gone to, obviously, there's many of these. But in 99 and 2010, I've done a visit to the same town. And it's stark about how many things have changed in that town from the time I went there to 2010. Now, in 2010, I wasn't in Swiggy, but I think what I learned in 2010 is relevant today. So that's why I wanted to say that. Which is, in 1999, we used to go and do these, um, so, so one of our, the brands that, that PNG was famous for is Whisper. And so we used to do a lot of these school hygiene programs with Whisper, where we are, you know, um, there's an agency that's talking to girls of, of premenstrual age or menstrual age and talking about hygiene, and then talking to them about the need for um, not missing school because of, because of menstruation. So those programs, of course, back in those days, we would stay in the van outside as men because we weren't going inside. But when the girls would finish the chat, we would just chat to the girls and chat to the boys in the school. So I remember doing this chat in 99. And I asked the girls and I said, Achha, kya karoge abhi? School mein a, school wapas aake kya karoge? And they would say, Ghar pe maa, maa ka haath batayenge. That was the standard response given in 1999 when you asked a bunch of girls, what would you do when you went back home? You ask the boys and they'll go back, they'll say, Ghar jaake khelenge. Okay. As stereotypical as it gets, that was true in, uh, in 1999. It was literally almost a trend that was the case, which means they were going home and learning how to cook. Maga Hat Batana was literally about learning how to cook, amongst other things. In 2010, I'm not saying this with any value judgment, just a state of fact. In 2010, I went to the same village, and a few things had changed, of course. Uh, Airtel kiosks had come up and stuff like that. But when I asked almost the same school, the same set of questions, they answered differently. Uh, obviously, as for me, I was very happy to say that, you know, some of them said homework karenge, some of them said... Uh, but almost nobody said Now, it really means that they're not learning how to cook. Now, I'm not saying it's a good thing or a bad thing. It just means that when they come to the cities, that they, along with their uh, honestly useless male colleagues uh, at cooking, are basically going to rely on outside help to be able to cook. Right? So it's another trend which you don't pick up when you're having these conversations. But 10 years later, many of these, these girls are also knowing how to cook, but it's only a functional knowledge. That's not what they think of themselves as the main purpose of being at home. And they're working, which is great, because they've joined the workforce, which is also great. But the reality is that they now in, are economic migrants in a city that they didn't grow up in, and they need to figure out a way to get food sorted. So if you add all of the other problems to many people in a city, not wanting to go out, and the fact that you have you know, dual couples, etc. And, and a need to sort this thing out means that the, the, the business was sort of ripe for us. The business was ripe for us, but the reality is that food delivery as a platform existed even before Swiggy existed. It's not like we invented food delivery. So what were the things that needed to be true for us to do? Now, I'm not just saying advertising, but there was a few things that needed to be true. And therefore, the name of the game was that the category conceptually existed, but it hadn't exploded. So the name of the game here is Category Development Index, a bunch of people who worked with, with uh, Vikram Smiling, because I'm sure you've seen this a lot. But to develop the category, you've got to invest deep in solving customer problems and solve it at a price and a, and a sort of um, service equation that is working for them. And so we had to bust barriers of people getting into the category in a meaningful way, and we had to bust barriers of people then using the, the category in a high-frequency way, and then we had to bust barriers on people expanding the wallet for those categories. And that literally, the three-step process, which is get them in, get them to transact frequently, and then expand the wallet is the name of the uh, game. And that's literally what we did. Now, that work, if done well, is frankly, from a consumer-facing company, sort of economy agnostic. The economy can go 5%, 7%, 8%. If you keep investing in getting customers in and getting them to frequent and use the brand portfolio play, because incomes can go up and down. But if you use that play, if you basically have that playbook and say, that's my annual business plan, you genuinely find that there, there will be some ups and downs, but you're never going to go through a recession as a company. And the thing which I keep saying is recession is a macroeconomic phenomenon, not a microeconomic phenomenon. We are discussing firms. We're not discussing the economy. So at a firm level, if you're doing the stuff that you're supposed to do, by and large, you will be recession-proof. You will have ups and downs. Profits will go up and down. But you will largely be recession-proof at least. And that's essentially what I'm talking about, which is trade-in, trade-up, and trade-across. And I'm going to use examples from the Swiggy um, sort of life to show how that, that's something which we have done. Um, so the three creatives I'm going to show, and they are in actually the sequence in which we went into this category. Step one, and this is for most of us who have been 
who've seen, Swiggy is really only entered, it was not the first entrant, it was really maybe number 14 or 15, so we didn't have first mover advantage, but when it entered, it says, I have to create the category. The category didn't really exist, and there were a whole bunch of reasons why it didn't exist. Most people felt that if you had to order food, you could not order a papad, you had to order a meaningful value, a volume of food. They had a minimum order value. You couldn't order it from any restaurant you wanted, and you couldn't order from any distance you wanted. It was within a four kilometer radius. And worse still, if Ramu in the store wasn't available, you couldn't have ordered the food anyway. So there were a whole bunch of things that were preventing people from relying on this as a habit, which meant that the habit never really formed. So we had to bust individual barriers that existed one by one. And of course, we had to bust it by actually creating the platform and creating the product, but also then telling consumers at scale about the product. So what I'm going to do is, if you can just play the first four series of ads, which are really about category creation via busting barriers. He's looking for a single. And he sneaks one in there. Even the smallest food orders deliver. Swiggy, what a delivery. Five balls, 20 to get. The fans are praying for a miracle. And he gets away with it. Even the smallest food orders deliver. Swiggy, what a delivery. स्कूल में मेरा भी एक बैंड था ब्लैक मामबा स्विगी करो फिर जो चाहे करो आज ट्राई करे कासा डीला लसाग ने भी मंगा ले गुड चॉइस द बैट्समैन आर टेकिंग अ रिस्क हियर दाल किचन भी ऑर्डर कर ले आलू जीरा भी ओह दैट्स वेल प्लेड ट्राई समथिंग यू विथ स्विगी मैच टीमिंग या डिस्काउंट स्विगी व्हाट अ डिलीवरी so you can see that essentially they are all about the first two, if you think about it. I mean, of course, the second one, the, the Swiggy uncle became so famous that he started getting recognized in airports. But that's why we, that was a sequel ad. But essentially, it was about the fact that there is no minimum order and it will come quickly. So just, just do it because there is no minimum order. Because you could order for a fee anything as less as 50 rupees. The, the uh, searches for Gulab Jamuns after that ad, the night after that was ad, searches for Gulab Jamuns went up 11,000%. Um, it is not that they didn't think gulab jamuns were available. Everybody knew gulab jamuns are available in restaurants, but the fact that they could order gulab jamuns from restaurants is, is something that that created. And I don't think that anything close to uh, that could have been created. Uh, but the reality today is that we do have a lot of snacks orders. Snacks is a meaningful segment for us. A lot of people order chai and snacks along with it in the evening slot. And those are things which basically meant that you have food at the, um, at the fingertip. This next couple of uh, creatives are essentially going to tr try to now talk about expanding occasions, uh, which is that you think that you're ordering the whole meal in, but you could also order it for an ad additional occasion. And essentially, you're trying to create both a wallet as well as penetration through that. So if you can play the last two, please. Okay, you're making it all. What will you eat with it? Alu. Chole. Alu. इस घर में मेरी वैल्यू तो थैंक यू छोले घर का खाना साथ में थोड़ा स्विगी ऑर्डर करो अपनी फेवरेट रेस्टोरेंट से ये ना नारक दिंगे पास्ता बन रहा पार्टी पास्ता पास्ता अल्लाह पार्टी पास्ता अदला उनको पूरी आदे Thanks, Pa. Wow. Pasta or a garlic bread. Oh. Super Pali. Wheat is a part of our favorite restaurant. Let's do some swiggy or something. So you can see. I mean, I I know. Next week I'm in Chennai, not this week. So I did play a Tamil ad without. I'm not time lagged. I know I'm in Bombay. But you can see that even without perhaps understanding the language, some of you may not. The fact is that you're talking about an addition. The in the. 
I mean, everybody knows chole can't be made on a jiffy, even if you are the best cook in the world, it needs overnight and all of that. So if you suddenly have a situation where you're expanding the occasion to say, this is the, the basic cuisine and you can add another dish to it, you can make an entry into a house where the absolute gatekeeper is in that particular case a homemaker or at least the primary um, you know, cook in that house. So we are finding that a penetration into, um, into localities which have a lot of homemakers, et cetera, et cetera, is increasing because you're essentially saying you may not want to replace what is truly replaceable, which is the mum of the house, but you could probably try something that even she couldn't do because chole can't be done overnight, except overnight. And therefore, it's expanding penetration and over time then frequencies too. Uh, now, given that this is a business that can very quickly lead to dormancy, which is I may have changed their, I may have changed my location, I may have changed my uh, uh, sort of habits and stuff like that. I'm, so there's a large number of dormants that you have to worry about. So you can get all those customers in, but if you're not worrying about dormants, you're not going to basically get this business to expand because you can't keep, it's a leaky bucket problem. So we actually have a very smart, and that's where the whole power of big data, et cetera, comes in, to activate dormants. And you can activate dormant by saying, hey, listen, you haven't come for a while, here's a coupon, which is a good way to increase burn, because they didn't leave because they didn't have a coupon. They knew there were coupons. But there is a problem that we had that basically, as a result of which you left. So understanding that problem at scale for over you know, 50 uh, or 5 crore people is, is not that easy at an individual level. So we obviously do that, and then we make sure that the emailers and the advertising that's sent is basically capturing that insight. So I'll show you a couple of... Um, I don't know if this is visible, but you can look. This, this is done at an individual level. To be able to do that for five crore people on the basis of their real data is where the power lies. Essentially, I don't know if you can see it in the back, but I'll just say the key points. This is the person who's been a, what we call a dormant or a lapsed user. Essentially, he's not made orders in Swiggy. So Shohan is being told that we have added new restaurants. We have essentially told him the specific restaurants that either he searched for and didn't find because we didn't have it at that point of time, or searched for and at that point of time that restaurant was closed, or we were not servicing those restaurants, and those are popular restaurants in his area, and those are now available in that area. And we will send this email only when we have confirmation that those restaurants for that customer are serviceable, or what is called available to order. So basically saying, look, you searched for it, after that you never came back because it's possible you thought these restaurants are not on Swiggy, is a good reason to come back. Now there are 20, 30, 40 reason codes that we have found out, and sending this out and saying order now is, is, is leading to a fair bit of dormant reactivation for us. And that, if you combine that to basically going into the restaurants, into the consumer's home, getting the frequencies in, expanding the, the basket, and going after consumers who have lapsed, you can find enough people who are in any of these, buck these buckets, frequency increase, wallet increase, lapsed increase, that you can have growth. Now, if you basically then read the papers and say the economic growth is forecasted to come down from 5% to 4% or whatever number you believe, the reality is it can depress you because you can't control it. But if you keep yourself, the good news is nobody in Swiggy really reads, reads the papers, they're all millennials, um, and the stuff that's coming in to their digital phones is not really news. So the good news is that they are sort of devoid from that problem. They're just looking at it and saying, I have so many consumers, I need to solve these consumers, and literally every week all the conversations are about how do we solve these consumer problems. So as long as people see meaningful consumer pockets, either individuals who haven't bought us, or individuals who are buying less from us, or individuals who are buying less uh, rupee value from us, and you keep the organization focused only on that, you can find that you're not really, you may slow down because there are some macroeconomic factors, but you're not really going to see um, sort of uh, the sort of the cycle of depression coming into your salespeople and cycle of depression coming into your advertising people and stuff like that. And so that's really, a, like I said, I'm not an economist, but essentially focusing on, and I've experienced this even in my previous life when I was in PNG, we would just focus on the fact that eight out of 10 diapers in this, uh, babies in this country are still not diapered. So what slowdown are we talking about? There's still eight babies that you need to get into diapering territory or you know, seven out of 10 uh, consumers don't re really use toothbrushes and change their toothbrushes properly. So the opportunity in a country like us, if you look at the underserved, unserved, or unpenetrated is so big that it is like a perpetuity. And if you as a microeconomic unit, which is a firm, keep focusing on that, you can basically make sure that some of that the gloom doesn't really affect you. And I think that there is a part of sort of talking yourself into the gloom or talking yourself out of the gloom that is definitely true when you're focusing on customers only as opposed to other ecosystem um, statements. 
So that's essentially the results. So in 2014, we were one city. We had three delivery boys, and we had, 100, we had orders in the hundreds. In 2018, we had slowly learned that, hey, does this model work? We've gone to 10 cities. Remember, it's taken us four years to get to 10 cities, and we had 20,000 delivery boys, and we had lakhs of orders. 2020, this is now, we just started 2020. We are in 550 cities as of January. 300,000 delivery boys and crores of orders. And this is with the fact that barely anybody uses us still. So you can imagine this, all of this is the fact that barely any Indian uh, consumer uses us still. And therefore the growth forecast for, the, for 2020 is still pretty strong just because of that fact of barely anybody uh, using us. Because the consumer metrics are that only 20 lakh people come every day. They only order four times a month out of the, out of the 100 that I talked about. They get the food in 31 minutes, which is good, but the opportunity is sitting right in those numbers that 20, 20 lakh only, that's, lo that's not very much every day. Four times a month le still leaves nine to six times a month to deal with. Um, and so essentially that's the journey. So we are essentially saying let's add customers, move the four per month number upwards, and let's now leverage the scale that we have to cut the burn. So that's essentially the, the goal for 2020, which is possible if we basically look at the fact that now we know what to do with each of these things. For example, the number of people who ordered a dinner but haven't ordered a breakfast is 10%. So 90% of the people who have ordered a dinner haven't ever ordered a breakfast with us. Imagine the growth potential that is there if you just give them solutions. It's not a coupon that's causing it. It's a whole host of factors that are in our control that's causing them to not order breakfast and I can go on and on about it when I slice and dice the business. So I think the mantra, as it were, I, I don't know why Vikram asked me to talk about this topic, but the reality is that, um, that we, if you keep focusing on customer develop, or the, the category development and focus on the customer, you will, as a microeconomic unit, find that the gloom affects you in some ways, but it doesn't really affect your day-to-day -day of the employees. So that's, that's it for me. Thank you.